So what I do when I throw a closed handle for a casserole, I make it so that it's like a water tower type thing. It comes in like this, up, and then it's closed. And the reason I come out at the bottom is for attaching it, you really need the width at the bottom. You don't want to just try and throw a piece that is straight, that comes straight up, because down here you'll get frustrated. You need that little bit of clay on the bottom. So this is... <laughs> Merry Hanukkah, Happy Christmas. <laughs> I was going to see what's going on in there. I don't know. Okay, so then you're going to come up. There are a lot of considerations. One is, one of the most important is, can you get your hand around it? Mm -hmm. um, you don't want it to stick out. That one kind of sticks out a little far. This one's a little shorter, a little fatter. That one's thinner. Um, and you want to think, you, you want yourself or your customers or your friends and family to not struggle. The more person friendly a pot is the more somebody will use it I think you know I mean if it's, I there are certain things that I reach for all the time and it's generally because they're comfortable in my hand um, or I love the potter that made them or something of that sort so this is going to be a little short one and then I'm just going to take it and close in the top So if I were making an open one, it's fine the way it is, just like this. If I'm going to close it, I'm going to use my left thumb. And just start bringing it in. And I learned when I was in North Carolina to put the clay in between my right, I'm right-handed, so my right um, index finger and my middle finger, and just, I use my middle finger to walk the clay in. I'm not used to having rowdy noise, huh? <laughs> We're used to Dennis and the forklift and stuff like that. So let's close her up. After it's closed, then I just go over it a couple times to make sure it's a little wobbly, but I guess I should have used real clay today. Or, you know, this is really cool. <laughs> so then you can play with this. Once you get it closed, I try and compress it like four or five times into the middle because you will get a crack here if you don't. So I just go in a couple times and use your clothespin to just make it look a little nicer. Swirl Once you've got it closed, you've trapped the air in there, so you can really play with it a little bit more um, and kind of refine the line. I mean, uh, the people, Michael Sherrill, who made the mud tool little ribs, he really, I mean, it's such a nice design, and the curve is just lovely. Yes, I use the curve of these so often. So now it's pretty much finished. So I have a bottom. This is hollow. So what I'm going to do, see if I can do it so you guys can all see it. I'm going to put my needle tool in. This will be 
the under part of the thing and just go around just a little bit. And it looks a little big, it looks a little ragged, but I clean it up afterwards. So now I'm gonna dry it and I'm gonna put it on this pot. The reason I started talking before about the reason I put this line about an inch down, and that is I can, it's a nice place to put the top of the handle for the casserole. Take this off. And then I'm just going to, I've got the hole in the side here, in the bottom side. And I'll clean that up when I attach it. But then I just go and I cut this little skin of clay out. And see how thick this is down here? I'm going to cut this away. <laughs> thing that I have to consider about this is what, Teresa? Well, look at how round this is. If I, I see, here's the bottom. If I do it like this and I put it on, oh, yeah. look at how work. big that is. Yeah. Look at how big that is. So you're going to have to trim it down. Yeah. So, but a really nice way to trim it down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the bottom. And then but here, I think everybody can pretty much what? see. No, no, and I'm just going to cut it straight I'm across. <laughs> I obviously don't need all this clay, but just, <laughs> and then um, I just take, a lot, I have a tool that I use that has like four or five prongs on it, and um, I mean, this is pretty wet, but I'm just going to kind of scratch it. A toothbrush works really well if you have an extra one. Don't use the one that you use. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, use an extra one. Um, so it, Not exactly yeah. the same, Susan. Yeah. And I just dip it in water. I don't even bother to score. Oh, so that's on the top. The flat part's on the top and the rounded part's on the flat bottom? Flat part's on the top. It okay. fits right on that nice. Uh, nice little line there. You know, it fits on the line that I put there. And then this goes on here. And see, it can be fired. Oh, nice. So that, you don't want to put it, your casseroles came out very well. The one, was this dropping. part, came down. Yeah. And you want to think of that. Yeah. You don't want it to come down, so you're going to have yeah. to, so you can't glaze this yeah, part. That. So that's it. Then I just take my thumb and I go around. And I'm going to take off a lot of this clay that's just kind of extra. I don't really need it. It's kind of nice when you first put it on. It gives you a lot to attach there. But I just... Well, you can see from that one, you know, how I attached it. But you basically just take your time. That's one of the things that Clay has taught me. Take your time. I love when it looks like it's just coming right out. It just brings right into the leaf. So has anybody watched The Great Pottery Throwdown? Yep. I watched Anna. It, it, we do clay games, and it gave me some ideas for clay games. Yeah. 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 Well, our guild, once oh. a year, we do that. So, you guys can see how this is going on. And in this case, it doesn't matter if you trim your pot before or after attaching the handle. With this pot, I try and trim them before. Yeah, That's this a great question, it, right? That's a great question. Let's look how that goes. These, um, I don't know, when I was in France and I lived there for a couple years, I had one that was like this. And I just, it's nostalgia, I guess. I just really like the little stubby handles on these. And um, Kathy actually brought in a pot that was the inspiration for this yeah. to our class in this fall. Out where it, where it, it was a out. beautiful piece. No, yeah. well, I think we think that it's um, manufactured, but the, maybe Very the well glazing I'm thinking almost like the potters, what is it, the potters at um, uh, Bennington that mm -hmm. take and, you know, mm -hmm. mass produce the, mm -hmm. the base and then they dip the um, 
you know, stuff. And I think sort of maybe that's the way that casserole went. You know, they mass produced the casserole and then they maybe glazed it yeah. or something like that. Yep. I agree with you. Yeah, it was um, a lovely piece. Yeah, English. Yeah. Um, in, in the Korean work, um, a lot of the Korean work doesn't have handles. Mm -hmm. uh, but for teapots, they have these handles that come out like this.